Uh, we have to wait until the animal kingdom has raised the evolution of the body material high enough so our cycles can start. Okay. Oh, I didn't know these were on here. These are some of the Miami pictures. Um, some of the ones that I didn't put on the tape. Because <laughs> I'll kind of go through them here. Here's the kid in Miami. His name is Manny Escondon, is his real name. He's taking notes. Here these discs came in. His girlfriend took the pictures. These are flat bottom discs. They're made on Earth. They're called Vril discs, V R I L. They're manufactured down in Brazil. Uh, they also have a factory in, uh, down by uh, in New Schwabenland in Antarctica. There's another picture as the news copter came in. Look at the first three discs. When they see the copter, uh, they start to turn invisible or put their shields up. And the first three crafts, they go out in a series, are just becoming invisible when you snap the picture. It was taken with a Polaroid at a thirtieth of a second, so it caught it right in the end of going out there. These discs uh, were designed by German technology in the late 40s. Uh, the first ones we know of that were tested out were probably around 47 or 48. They're called drill levitation devices. Uh, as you can see, they actually fly quite well. Notice the nice V formation. Uh, being typical earthbound Air Force pilots, they're still flying in formation. Uh, we understand this technology a little bit uh, because intelligence has shot down some of their ships, learned how they're doing it. And when you hear rumors about how the Americans are building flying discs, what we're doing is playing catch up to the German technology that's been around since the 40s. Their technology has accelerated tremendously. Uh, they make two different types of levitation devices. That's what we're doing out in Area 51. We manufacture the devices in San Diego. They're put together by General Electric. We test them at Area 51. Here's the German disc parked down on the ground at a facility down in Brazil. Here's four guys standing next to it down there. There's a whole row of them. You couldn't count how many were down there. Uh, he, just, he had his Polaroid with him and grabbed a few short shots here. Over here's two guys here and a craft coming in. You can see the two guys standing here. And down here at the bottom, which I know isn't clear, uh, is one of these old bell-shaped crafts. Uh, many of you are probably not familiar, but there was a fellow named George Adamski back in 1962 who claimed to be having contacts with people from Venus. This was the craft he was taking pictures of. Uh, George's contacts were real, but he wasn't having contacts with anybody from Venus. The blonde-haired ladies that were inside the craft were actually from Brazil. That's where the crafts were flying out of. They've been making them down there since about 1947. They find it very convenient if they make contact or land somewhere to tell people they're extraterrestrials and we're very open to it. If they tell them, hi, we're part of a German intelligence group from Brazil, people would freak out. Uh, here's a, I got my camcorder and I've got my micro lens on here getting as close as I can to this picture. It's a very, very small Polaroid picture that's about that big and it got wet in the rain. He left it in the windowsill. So I've ironed it and put it on paper so we didn't lose it. And I'm copying it with my macro. Here's the whole picture. Over here is one of the old bell-shaped discs. Here's one in the air. Notice the platforms they're sitting on. Here's a guy standing here. There's a guy over here just coming out of this disc. I'm trying to get real close to the bottom of it here so we can see what they're like. This is an area, if you look on a map, I've got a little videotape over there if you're interested in learning more about this uh, information called Space Cities. Uh, I've narrowed it down to about within a 200 mile range where this facility is at and what they're doing down there. Here's the guy standing there. The disc sit down on the platforms. Remember earlier I was telling you about how the condensers charge out the bottom? They have to charge the field up. If you get too close to the earth, the charge dissipates because it's grounded. These metal platforms, they sit them down on the platforms, then they can keep the ship charged up. And if they need to take back off right away, they can. They don't have to wait for the ship to charge back up. The platforms charge them up for them, so they can lift right back off. If they would sit them down without the platform on the tripod legs, they've got to go through the process again of charging the capacitors up, which takes three to four minutes. So if they're in a hurry to get away, they're in big trouble. These old bell-shaped discs actually have three Mercedes-Benz truck engines in them driving the magnetic field. This was their first design that they made. This was the first ones that the Germans built. 
These craft here were under consideration and they were working on them in the end of World War II. When you hear about Hitler's secret weapon at the World War II, if you go back and look at the newspapers, that's what he was talking about. They were in hopes they would get these things up and working and they would still have a chance then to win the war. Fortunately for all of us, they did not, and we'd all be speaking German today. Uh, interesting side effect too, once they finally did get them up and working, they made lousy uh, war weapons because the field around them prevents you from dropping bombs or anything out of them. It ignites the bombs. So it took them a while, they don't even have weapons on them for a while, and then they had to come up with uh, uh, other kinds of devices. This was the first picture that I saw from the kid in Florida of his German contacts, and to my knowledge I still think they're his best and perhaps his only contacts. I think he probably had a couple of contacts from these people. They came, uh, they took him for a ride, it looks like on one or two occasions, and then perhaps they never came back. So it's, we found this situation on several people around the planet. So it's not an uncommon situation. And this is from ET technology, but it was before 47. It wasn't ET, it was nothing not. to do with ET. It wasn't. No, just good old German intelligence figured it out. Uh, I can tell you where they got it, it's kind of a long story, but basically it came from uh, German people who had traveled to India to study the concept of the virile, the energy of the universe, and they were trying to figure out how to levitate their own bodies to move in time. And they came back and they explained it to people what they were doing in India, how they were trying to travel in time. And some German engineers tried to build a machine to travel in time, but when they turned the thing on and lifted up off the floor instead, they didn't time travel, but it floated and they stumble onto the idea of how to make what's called a Vril levitation device. We think they did that probably the first time and sometime probably around 25 or 27. And then the concept laid around in private circles for a while and then became a, a potential thing during the war and then really didn't happen until after the war. These are Billy's pictures, some of his early movie footage. We've got a car going down the highway over here and the trees blowing in the foreground here and here's the disc. They're trying to show him, you know, what the, just allowing him to take some movie film of the craft. This is a few minutes long, so if you want to ask any other questions, feel free while it's running here. I'll just kind of let it run. You can see they float. Uh, the, the field around the craft that supports it, the ship is kind of in its own self-contained environment, so it floats on the gravitational wave. It's like a boat on water. And when they blink out, what is the technology? They, were, uh, they really don't go anywhere. Uh, they figured out how to make them invisible to our eyesight by the controlling the frequency of the field around the disk. It's just a trick. They sent the field up to a certain frequency. It bends reflected light. We can't see it. You and I don't see direct light. We see reflected light. Sun bounces off of me, goes to your eyeball, and you see me. This is a demo right here, I think, where it if I put a very strong magnet, for instance, between you and I, right here to interfere, and keep turning it up, eventually the magnet will attract the photons that make the light and bend them and they'll go the other direction. And you couldn't see me, but they can see me over there. But you wouldn't be able to. So that's the basic theory we think they're doing. They've just figured out how to cloak themselves by bending light and causing our eyes not to see it. Because they don't go anywhere. They were clear to Billy that the craft is still there. If you're inside the ship, you can still look outside and see everybody else, but they can't see you. And yet we can see objects beyond the yeah, 